Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing great. Danny Dan here and welcome back to Danny's Recreational Space. This is the third and last video of the trilogy How to Scratch Period Action Figures from Plastic Cases. Enjoy! The starting idea for this project was to make a droid figure, but increasing the number of points of articulation from 5 up to 10, including elbows, knees, and waist. I figured I would use plastic pipes to make the articulations of the limbs. For every articulation, two pipes, one slightly wider than the other. The biggest issue to solve was, and still is, the friction. I found out that leaving two long flanges at the end of the inner pipe, the black one in this example, they could push against the other pipe, providing much friction. But just because the pipes are hollow, this only works when the limbs are bent, and not when the limbs are in the stretched position. When stretched, they tend to wobble. Mamma mia! I'll solve this issue in another video, adding some filling into the wider pipe. Selecting a proper hinge pin might also be a big help in providing friction to the joint. I'm talking about a pin with a width that matches the diameter of the holes of the hinge. But again, when working with pipes, which are hollow, the friction surface is confined to the pipe's walls, hence it is very limited. To fill the void of the articulation, but also to hide the hinge pin, I came up with a solution. I used a straw, or better, the corrugated portion of it. Slipped inside the barrel of the pen not only filled the void and hid the pin, it also provided extra detailing. I was extremely satisfied with that. Among my scraps I found these domino tiles. This should be long enough to make this beanpole droid a couple of decent feet. This is such a great type of crispy plastic for who, like me, cuts, saws, files, sands, basically works plastic as if it was wood or something. Too bad this is not always the case. To make some visually interesting details on the legs, I thought I'd make the figures some fins, and I would also clip a series of plastic rings right behind them. Cutting little pieces from this angular shaped scrap, part of the plastic frame of a TV set, also really good crispy plastic, I was able to come up with an interesting solution to cover the corners of the feet and hide the points in which a segment of zip tie ends and another one begins. Just like what happened with the legs, I also wanted to provide the arms of my figure with an extra point of articulation, that one of the elbow. I used electrical cable clips to make prehensile hands for the droid, since I plan to make at least an accessory for him to hold. To secure the hands to the droid's forearms, I made pins using the body of these Christmas ornament hooks, the plastic of which, when melt, gives me the effect I want, allowing me to reproduce realistic rivet-looking bumps on both sides of the wrists. And this is how the elbows look like, with the pin inserted and melted on both extremities. The arms needed the shoulders that function as pivotal joints, just like what happened in most iconic five points of articulation action figures of the past. I identified these mechanical caps that some glass bottles have with something that could act as T-shaped pivot joints to make the droid's shoulders. These fantastic plastic bits, they already come with a hole that goes from side to side, and at that point it was only a matter of making holes on both sides of the plastic enclosure I picked as a torso. Being the torso of this figure, a two-part plastic enclosure held together with a screw, namely a European power plug, the holes for the limbs were drilled right along the division line of it, in an attempt to reproduce a five points of articulation action figure torso. I started using a hand drill, and then continue to enlarge the two halves of the holes, little by little, with round files of increasing diameter, 
constantly checking what I was doing. I continued in this fashion until the diameter of the holes was slightly inferior to that one of the pivot joints, and that allowed me to obtain a fair amount of friction once the two parts of the torso were locked into place and held together by the screw. The torso of this droid is an articulated one made coupling together two power plugs, both provided with a screw closing mechanism that somehow go really well together. Look, they're just meant to be together. Just like us. That is so right, darling. I actually could I actually think got a modification that could be performed on the torso on the in order to have size. As I advertised in the previous video, today I share with you a modification on the torso one could perform to solve the issue of protruding legs. And this procedure allowed me to create T-shaped hips, so typical of five points of articulation action figures, that allow both thighs to be embedded into the lower portion of the torso, in line with the rest of the body of the figure. I had to be very precise. The size of the opening had to match these toy wheels I chose to use to make the joints. Another reason why I had to be very precise was because later on I would have to use these L-shaped scraps to reconstruct the edges of the casing. These were made with a precise 90 degree angle. I first locked the case with the screw and started to cut it, trying to be as precise as I could. There I had my T-shaped hips. Afterwards, it was time to reconstruct the walls of the casing. To do so, four L-shaped bits were needed, two for every one of the two halves of the plastic enclosure. I glued the first one of the two L-shaped bits to the first half of the casing and made the connection stronger, adding a mixture of superglue and baking powder on the inside part of the casing. I saw off the excess, which eventually I used to make another one of these L-shaped bits, and then it was just a matter of doing some old uh, wax on, wax off uh, to smoothen it out. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Wax on, wax off. I found a wooden stick that fit into the holes of the wheels just fine and made a perfect pin for the hips pivot joints. You can actually see how the screw here is responsible both for locking the two halves of the casing in place and for conferring friction to the pin, preventing it from spinning loose. With a couple rings cut from a plastic pipe, I eventually provided both pivotal joints with the so-called mushroom head, in order to prevent them from coming off the articulation. I had a pretty clear vision about how I wanted the head of this droid to turn out. I knew I wanted to use this droid's head, I knew I was gonna use the kernel of a peach to reproduce brains for the droid, and I knew I was gonna use this interesting bit here, a bell-shaped clear plastic scrap coupled with this other one bit here, that fit perfectly with the first one and made the perfect button part for the droid's head. And looking now to my sketchy sketches for this project, I must say I'm amazed by how close it was the result compared to what I had in mind at the time when I made them. Making the head of the droid was such a time-consuming process that required me to do some hardcore modifications, to come up with the custom bits, and to do all sorts of adjustments. As you can imagine, the biggest challenge of all was to make the actual head of the droid, with the brains and stuff, fit into the crystal bell exactly the way I wanted. In fact, more than once, I had a feeling I was building a ship into a bottle. After doing some cutting on the back, filing the top of the crests and doing some other adjustments, the head eventually fit into the bell. At 
at that point, I was finally able to glue the two halves of the peach kernel onto the two crests, completing the main concept of the head. I wanted to design some weapons and accessories for this droid, making it just like if it was an actual toy. So first of all, I made the droid a defense pistol. I figured that being the Power Crystals uh, such a profitable revenue, a Power Crystal Scout needed a defense weapon. In case he had to face intergalactic marauders and stuff. He's got an intergalactic business, you know. He can't afford his company to lose profit. To make the pistol, I used leftovers from previous cuts. After gluing together the two halves, I made the bottom part of the pistol. I then used a, a plastic pin, a series of plastic rings, and the tip of a pen to make a detailed gun barrel. This is exactly the shape I was looking for. I wanted to design the pistol so that it could be easily clipped onto the droid's forearms. I cut a ring from the same pipe I used to make the legs and turned it into a clip. I then made the connection stronger with a little pin and a couple rounds of super glue and baking powder. You never know. And now it is child proof. I figured that the Power Crystal Scout droid had a specific tool that he used to grab the crystals, but most important of all, to check if they were up to standard or not, in terms of purity, you know. My idea actually was to convert this gun sight toy I found into the droid's tool. The shape and the size of this toy seemed to be just fine for what I intended to do with it. I only had to design a way for the droid to hold it and carry it. First I simply placed the crystal to the end part of the gun sight toy, but soon had the feeling that there was much dispersion of the light, so I ended up cutting off the extremity of the gun sight and even drilling a hole into the crystal using a spherical diamond drill bit to place the little red LED light right inside it. Fortunately, no major adjustment to the wiring was needed. And I ended up with a much brighter crystal. I imagined the tool to be provided with claw grabbers to be used by the droid to pull out the crystal from the cluster but also to hold the crystal into place while being examined. I wanted the grabbers to actually move like a, a toy, you know, so I had to think about something that was visually interesting but also functioning. And what I ended up doing, once again inspired by these electrical cable clips, was something really not much different to the way this Lego part works. This is technically referred to as a knuckle joint. And this is how I made it. The actual body of the class was made using a quite thick plastic scrap coming from a PC casing. The knuckles of the hinge were made gluing a pipe all along the thicker edge of the plastic chunk. Yeah, the pipe, along with a suitable pin, would later become the knuckles of the joints. My idea was to create one single long claw with the knuckles already glued onto it and then to sew it into three equal parts. I wanted this bond to be rock solid, so I reinforced it uh, with a few rounds of super glue and baking powder, on both sides, of course. With that accomplished, I was first able to saw off the three claws from the big plastic chunk. And then to cut the pipe, so to make room for the third knuckle that would make up the hinge joint. That one in the middle, you know, the one that would eventually be connected to the droid screw. Finally, with a thick sprue that fit properly, I could make the perfect hinge pin. To reinforce even more the connection between the knuckles and the body of the claws, I veneered the whole upper surface of every claw with an extra layer of thin plastic. Then I used pins 
to secure every cloth to the extremity of the tool. And finally, to add some interesting details to the tool, I thought I would recreate corrugated pipes to be added to each cloth. I used this very ductile aluminium wire and covered it with a very thin electric cable to recreate a corrugated pipe effect. I thought yellow could be a good choice to go with the brown of the tool, and especially after a black wash. Here you can see the black handle of the tool already glued into place. Using round nose players like these is possible to give the pipes the curves you want. It took more than a few adjustments to come up with the right shape for the pipes, of course, but what I thought to be a most tedious process actually revealed itself to be extremely entertaining. And I must say, I'm very satisfied looking how it turned out. The droid's crate backpack was made following the outline of this very simple concept I first draw in a one-to-one -one scale. At that moment, the only way to make the backpack as close as I could to the concept was to use sections of a plastic pipe and a kebab sticks to first make a main structure. Plastic garden net was glued all around the main structure and all the junction points were hid with angular pieces made bending thin plastic scraps in this fashion. A solid chunk of plastic was placed to reinforce the structure and eventually support a pin used to connect the crate to the back of the droid. To add details to the structure, I thought it would be cool to frame it with some sprues and I found these to be perfect for what I had in mind. Eventually, on top of the frame, I also positioned a couple of swiveling lights made using tips of marker pens and round bits coming from the inside of cassette tapes, connected with a sprue to these versatile cable clips. As always, welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel, and special thanks to all the people that watch, like, share, comment on my work. I am very grateful for your support and very proud to be part of this community. I hope you liked the video and till next time, you have a good one, bye!